I grew up in apartheid South Africa for the first half of my life, which meant that uh, because of my skin color, I lived in a area that was demarcated uh, for people of color. Um, it meant that schooling sucked for me. I was one of 50 in a class in my primary school. It meant that uh, just solely on the basis of my skin color, I couldn't get to do the stuff that most people would consider normal. Um, it was systemic in that the government thought out ways to suppress a whole people group and to impact the psychology, the family makeup, every aspect of what makes society a functioning society was broken down and repackaged through the lens of racism. So racism is a big deal. However, I'm so glad that Jesus is so kind. I'm so glad that Jesus models what it's like to reach out to people beyond his race. The way he deals with both women, race, the poor, the broken, is unlike anything that was seen in his day in terms of the Jewish people. He is the ultimate bridge builder and breaks through some of the relational tensions simply because he values love. Um, and the way he demonstrates that is by breaking through into the hearts of people. But the reality is that the kingdom of God looks like every nation, every tribe, every tongue in their culture demonstrating love and worship before God. I believe cultures represent the multifaceted nature of God because God is more glorified in diversity than he is in uniformity. Um, our, our sonship is not to be uh, confused with uniformity. God wants us to be unique in our culture, in our identity, in our skin color, so that we reflect who he is. However, our culture, our skin color, is not the ultimate expression of our identity. Our identity is primarily expressed through being sons of God. It's not a Jewish identity, so I don't need to become Jewish to do that. Neither is it a particularly um, uh, American culture or a English culture. It is that I'm a son of God. And son, being a son of God means that my identity is wrapped around the incredible kindness and grace of Jesus. And it's really important that we understand that as the first principle of how we deal with racism. The rest then becomes a lot easier. In other words, I start to think through a kingdom lens. The Bible tells me I need to be liberal with all things because my people, as it were, were systemically oppressed. I want to make sure that how I share the stuff that I have now in terms of privilege break some of the systems that have been built around um, racism and suppressing people. So I help provide an opportunity for people to become all that they need to be. It means that my wallet and my heart are impacted. How I love is impacted. How I release education, how I release sharing resources, all of that's impacted to help break the back of systemic racism. Ultimately though, I want to be driven by love, not a liberal agenda, not a freedom agenda, I want to be uh, driven by love. In our country, there was a band of people called freedom fighters who fought for our freedom. And, and so often as is demonstrated throughout history, the people who fight for freedom then become oppressive in the next generation. And I believe it's because there hasn't been a transition uh, where we begin to move from being freedom fighters to being freedom fathers and mothers. And I want to be one of those who create opportunities for people of all color to be all that they can be. If that means having hard conversations, I want to do that. But I do not want to fight for freedom in a way that divorces love, because ultimately love covers a multitude of sins. And the kingdom of God, when it comes to justice, looks like freedom for everyone. It looks like those who are oppressing suddenly become who God's called them to be, so they're oppressed no longer. And it looks like those who've been victims of oppression suddenly become free and powerful and they're no longer victims. The, the, the ground at the foot of the cross is equal for both the oppressor and the victim. And we need to find ways that bridge uh, through love and through kindness and the way we deal with one another and through open-hearted conversations. Ultimately, the issue of racism is a heart issue. And until the human heart is changed, philosophy, uh, Political persuasion is not going to change that because you cannot legislate heart change. It has to be a work of the Spirit. And so for me, as a person of color, I've learned to forgive white oppressors 
that kept my family suppressed for a long time. I've learned to build relationships with people that transcend simply the basis of my culture or color and connect on the basis of a kingdom reality that love is the currency of the kingdom. And I want that to drive everything that I do in terms of dealing with the very deep and complex issues of racism.